Hi, I'm Craig Putnam with WPI's Robotics Engineering Program. In this video, we're going to concentrate on sensors that you can use for measuring the distance to an object. We're going to start by looking at an IR range sensor made by Sharp. These are analog devices. They have three terminals, power, ground, and the output signal, which is a voltage that's proportional to the range. This sensor works by outputting a beam of infrared light through some optics from one side. That beam then bounces off some object that could be a different varying distance away. Depending on how far away it is, then the return beam arrives back. It falls on a linear array of photosensitive diodes. And where that beam focuses on that array determines the distance to the object. One of the major complications with this device is that the output voltage is not a linear function of range. If we look at this graph, we can see that the output voltage is, in fact, a, a nonlinear curve. And more interestingly, we'll see that the curve has an interesting behavior at really close ranges. What we see is, is that the voltage uh, falls off again. So as you get really close, the voltage goes down. It, at about 15 centimeters, the voltage peaks at around 2.7 volts output. And then as the range continues to grow, the voltage falls off again. So for example, at a range of about 6 centimeters, you get 1.5 volts. And at around 40 centimeters, you also get an output voltage of 1.5 volts. Now that's a problem. How do you know when you measure 1.5 volts which range you're actually seeing to the object? The easiest way to avoid this problem is simply to bury the sensor in the middle of your robot so that no object can be any closer than about 15 centimeters or where the voltage peaks. That way you're always working on the one side of the curve and you can't get over onto the back side of the curve where things can get confusing. So we've figured out that we can avoid the, the problem of having a voltage mean two different distances, but we still haven't attacked the problem of the output voltage being nonlinear with range. So how can we address this? One way you could do this is by looking up uh, on the spec sheet the different uh, voltages that you have at different known ranges for the sensor. You could then make a table in your code and use linear interpolation to get an approximation of the actual range. So that'll work. Uh, and it'll give you pretty fair results. Arguably a better solution to this, however, is to use those same data values, those same range and voltage uh, pairs that you can get from the table, and do a curve fit to that. Now, we wouldn't use a linearly squares fit because we know that it's not a linear relationship. So you might try a quadratic or possibly even a higher order polynomial to do a curve fit to this. But if you can come up with a good curve fit, that's probably the preferred way to do it. Then you've got a formula that you can simply plug your uh, voltage into, and what will come out the other end is the range. There are a couple of other things that you need to keep in mind when you're using a sensor like this. The first is, is that the object needs to be big enough to generate a good enough reflection to come back to the uh, sensor. So for example, if you were trying to detect a pencil 10 feet away, it's not going to work very reliably. It also matters what the material can be, because certain materials are going to reflect inter infrared energy better than others. Fuzzy, soft kinds of things are going to have a more diffuse type of reflection. Um, and the angle of the surface to the detector is going to matter as well. If you've got a hard surface, uh, think of a mirror, and, and the light is uh, hitting that, uh, it's going to reflect off and, and, and away from the detector. So you need to have a surface that's more or less perpendicular to the sensor. So that about covers it for the IR sensor. I want to now move on to the other type of range sensor that we have. This is the VEX ultrasonic sensor. Ultrasonics for measuring range are commonly found in nature. It's what bats and dolphins use when they're echolocating. We can see that it has two sensing uh, transducers. One is labeled input, the other is labeled output. The one labeled input is the one that generates an ultrasonic pulse, or ping, you can think of it. And that hooks up to your microprocessor. You need to send a pulse into the input. It generates this ultrasonic pulse. The other part of the sensor, the receiver, 
it's also a digital device and what you're going to be doing in your code is looking for the uh, receipt of the reflected sound. Okay, so you send out a ping, it bounces off some object, it comes back and your receiver generates a pulse that you need to detect on, in your code. What your code needs to do then is, is measure the time difference between when the pulse was sent and when it's received and from knowing the speed of sound and air then you can figure out how far away the object is. Don't forget that you have to calculate a round trip distance. I want to show you a different one now that's made by a company called Maxbotics. This works exactly the same way. It sends out a pulse and receives it. The main difference is, is that it uses the same transducer for both purposes. There's actually a PIC microprocessor on board this that does the range calculations for you. So unlike the VEX sensor, where you have to have code that does those calculations, the code is done for you on this uh, device. So let's talk a little bit about how you interface to these devices. The VEX ultrasonic sensor has two digital connections. One is uh, labeled input, the other is labeled output. The input one is for the uh, transmitter. It keys the transmitter to generate the ultrasonic pulse. The other one is for uh, the receiver and generates a signal when the pulse has been received. So it's very simple to interface to, but you have to do the work in the code. There are code libraries for this, uh, so you can call the, the library. Um, WPI Live, for example, has code for doing this, uh, so you don't have to write it yourself, but if you wanted to do things like temperature compensation, then you might have to go in and, and um, enhance that code. The Maxbotics sensor is a more complicated device in that it actually has three different ways of outputting the range information to you. The simplest way is to treat this as an analog sensor. So one of the outputs is in fact a voltage that varies with distance. The second output that it generates is a PWM output. So we've talked about PWM previously uh, and in this case it encodes the distance into the width uh, or the duration of the pulse of a PWM signal. The final way that it does output is that it can send out a pseudo uh, TTL RS-232 ASCII code. So it generates, for example, uh, the digits R, XXX, where R stands for range, the XXX is the distance to the object in inches, uh, and it just keeps sending that out uh, over a TTL serial line. So three different ways of interfacing to a Maxbotics sensor. One of the problems with an ultrasonic sensor, whether you're using something like this one uh, from VEX or the Maxbotics ultrasonic sensor, is that they can, of course, interfere with each other. If you have multiple sensors on board your robot, you have to make sure that when one sensor sends out a ping and another sensor is listening, that you don't get confused about uh, all of that and uh, calculate incorrect ranges. If you're using the VEX sensor, you have to do that work yourself. You have to decide for each sensor when it pings and wait the appropriate time for uh, a possible uh, receipt of an echo from the object and, and then do your calculation. Then of course you could have another sensor ping and so on. You could do the same thing with the Maxbotics if you're uh, controlling it so that it only pings once when you tell it to. That's one mode of operation. Another mode of operation for this is that you can let it free run. Now if you've got multiple of these sensors on your robot and they're all free running, then they can start interfering with each other. Ultrasonic pulses are quite directional, but once you start getting the reflections and the echoes moving around uh, in, the, in the environment, then they can start interfering with each other. So one way to deal with that is to strictly control it, don't let it free run, uh, and, and you ping each sensor individually. You can do that in your code. Another way you can handle this is that if you've got multiple of these, you can wire them from one to the next in what's called a, uh, a daisy chain so that the first one pings, and when that one's pinged and gotten its answer, it sends a signal to the second sensor, which then allows it to ping, it waits for its answer, then it sends a signal to the third one, and so on. That way, the units control and coordinate amongst themselves, and you don't have to worry about that in your code. Ultrasonic sensors are short to medium range devices. So, for example, with this sensor, 
you can measure ranges from approximately as close as about six inches out to about 35 feet. Now Maxbotix makes a number of different sensors and they have different beam patterns. What that means is the, the, the shape of the beam, if you want to think of it that way, has different characteristics and are used for different kinds of situations. So if you're trying to sense something that's relatively close, you might choose one kind of sensor. And if you're trying to sense something that's quite far away, you might choose another. As we discussed a few minutes ago, having to do with the Sharp IR sensor, um, the characteristics of the object that you're trying to measure the distance to matters as well. So if you're trying, again, to measure a pencil or detect a pencil that's uh, you know, 20 feet away, ultrasonics may or may not work very reliably. The spec sheets for these sensors, whether it's a Maxbotics like this or the VEX sensor, uh, will have uh, beam patterns and uh, some charts that will show you approximately how sensitive and how large an object can be detected at different ranges. So that's something that you'll need to pay attention to. Finally, the last thing to keep in mind is that the speed of sound varies with temperature. Temperature compensation is something that the Maxbotics sensor handles automatically when it powers up. It goes through a calibration mode. Uh, and you can read about the specifics that are required for uh, the calibration uh, on the spec sheets for this object. But it does do temperature compensation. This VEX ultrasonic sensor does not have temperature compensation. So if you wanted to accomplish that, then you'd have to have some separate sensor for measuring the temperature and then go into the code for uh, the range calculation that's, that's uh, associated with this sensor and modify that to take temperature into account. So that's it for range sensing. I hope this video has been helpful.